Ah, Veligion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we're gonna be doing our Lithuania into Ruthenia guide. A nation oftenly overlooked in Europa Universalis for Lithuania is actually one of the best world conquest candidates. If we get 5,000 likes on the video, I'm gonna do a secret guide for another even more overpowered world conquest candidate. So to start it off, we're gonna give the plus one admin and military privileges of Oversight by the clergy, expansion of zealotry, supremacy over the crown, patronage of the arts and exclusive trade rights, and we have a cool mission here, befriend the Cossacks for which we need 60 loyalty and they need to have the established the Cossack regiment's privilege. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be establishing the Cossack regiment's privilege and we also will be expanding and we need 5% for that. So what we'll be doing is we're going to be developing the province of Kiev once, make sure you encourage the development it only costs 34 so it's actually super cheap now we can expand the Cossack regiments, that you go. We can also sell titles, bunch of money for that, and then afterwards we can do our mission since it means that we got over 60 loyalty from selling the titles, befriending as a Cossacks, thus getting all the claims in this area here, and we afterwards will be taking the land from the estates, give out the Cossack self-governments as well, and we will be developing the province of Kiev a second time. With this, we are only getting 0.20 autonomy monthly rather than 0.30. One more thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be recruiting the free company to help us siege down stuff and once we have available land force limit we're going to be recruiting Cossack infantry and cavalry which is considerably better than the regular infantry and cavalry. We also will be focusing on our military points and go for whichever advisor is okay. Morale of armies or discipline is perfect but we were not lucky in that particular field so this guy is good too. We're going to start sending our troops by the border with the Crimeans. You also should be getting some alliances. Pretty much everybody wants to be a friend. I recommend you go for Brandenburg, Denmark and Hungary, especially if Hungary doesn't fall in the PU under the Austrians, as well as Bohemia sometimes might ally you. Regardless, get some alliances at the very beginning and focus mainly on the Crimean War. It's likely going to be a Crimean and Golden Horde War, since pretty much in every run I've tested, the Golden Horde or Great Horde also allies the Crimeans at the start. Declare the war whenever you're ready. I am also going to cobaladrate the, the Great Horde since I want to take lands from them. They're allied to Dulkadir and Biapas, so it's really not much of a massive alliance block that I have to deal with. Also, set your war target for something that's pretty close to you. I'm going to go for Yiddish Cool in my situation, and I'm going to ask RN Jesus to give me a great general. Give me some siege peeps, please. Okay, this actually is decent. Two shock and one siege is really not bad for the early game. Also, going to make my starting leader a general. That's pretty good too one siege pip and we're gonna use them to siege that stuff down whilst the other armies back them up. I don't think I've ever had a better timing for the last jousting tournament. This is pretty great since we are about to fight the uh, hordes here and it's going to come in very, very handy to be honest. There you go. That was actually a stack wipe because of the extra morale boost that we had and that is going to be sweet for the early game. That means the Crimeans don't have any more army, do they? Nope, no more army for the Crimeans. We just have to deal with the Great Horde army, which is quite big. So got to stay frosty. Bring the rest of this army to siege down everything here. We want to make sure we siege the Crimean and lands fast and get ready for the assault of the golden horde and i keep calling them the golden horde even though they're just the great horde they're not golden yet are they nor will they ever be oh crap they're gonna kick my army's ass here i gotta be careful with that make sure you keep your armies close together in these battles because the horde units are quite significantly strong especially the cavalry units they have however the ai doesn't usually recruit that many cav they only have 4,000 cav in their army which is really really little for a horde and we're going to attack them and wipe out this army in that situation so that we don't have to deal with them afterwards. There you go. This is a pretty fair fight and we have almost one morale above them. We got a zero roll though, so not sure how I feel about that. If it was above zero, we probably would have stack wiped that army there. We're going to properly consolidate so that we can use the excessive manpower that we have to recruit the Cossack infantry and cavalry. Oh, someone going to get a real hurt. We have our amazing Cossack units here that get a 10% shot 
shock damage bonus, which are gonna completely wipe out the Beapas army, which also means that I probably can piece them out if I just send a few extra- Oh, 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 the Golden Horde trying to save the day, aren't they? All right, no problemos, no problemos, sir. Let's go consolidate a little bit and let's see what happens. Oh, that's right. The Cossacks are kicking your butts. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's another army from Dulkadir. No! Oh, we won it, actually. Okay, that's actually not bad. Oh, we're not gonna win this battle, though. Likely, we're not gonna win this one. Yep, this looks really bad. And they got reinforcements. Oh, God. They got a one. Oh, no. Come on, come on. We gotta win this before the reinforcements arrive. Do it! Oh, my God. Cannot believe we actually won that. Dude, this is what I mean. Cavalry in the early game is absolutely insane. They had more troops than us. And holy mother of God, I got no man power left. Okay, that means one thing. Uh, we're gonna have to rely on some mercenary. Jokes aside, this war is tougher than you might imagine and we lost a bunch of troops so we're gonna get our mercs here before the situation goes down south and we're also gonna be going for the burger loans because they are definitely required go mercenaries let's go oh this is godsend five percent professionalism that means we can slacken that and what that means is we can actually still use our amazing cossack units here because we got the manpower to reinforce them all right you guys are gonna be going up north in that situation so we can fight against the golden horde and win this war quickly hey where do you think you're running to golden horde i said it again tonight i said golden horde instead of great horde oh dear lord i am definitely very special my mom always told me that i'm a very special kid and i trust her why would she ever lie to me oh my god did i just get baited i got baited oh this is so bad okay well this is not good you know what we're fighting for freedom of all lithuanian people in the world and a few dead people it's okay as long as we can replace them later on you will be missed brave lithuanian souls you will be missed we can peace out Biapas here and that's going to be a 5,000 units out of the war making it easier for me to uh, deal with the rest of the uh, hordes around this land in fact because of this we can wipe out the crimean army here oh no not crimea also never go for the estate statutory it is a horrible privilege never accept that golden horde wants to uh become friends no not yet you're going out on my terms make sure we kill off the dulka army so that we can peace out the dulka as well and let's bring these troops back into our land since we will be attacking other people very very shortly gonna get some claims on the livonian order although we will be getting more claims from the mission tree on the livonian order come on let's go over here oh actually dulka is getting sieged down by the ottomans one more month they should be able to peace out okay fair enough there we go we caught up with their army so we're gonna stack wipe this entire horrible army did we just attack with no leader we did wow what a what a great e4 player guys attacking with no general like that what a chad what an absolute chad all right enough of this schnitzel let's uh go ahead and piece them out white piece get out of here i don't want to bother going over and sieging you down and in the great horde peace deal we're gonna go for these provinces and we're gonna take all the money and war reparations as well why are we going for these provinces well there's a couple of reasons the most important reason is because because we will be releasing the nation of Astrakhan from the province of Manish to feed them back all of their cores in the next war against the Great Horde. We also got 50 admins since we had a mission to get lands in that area. Nice. Considering I would be getting a massive coalition here, I'm not gonna take everything. This seems like a very doable coalition, literally nobody important, except the Ottomans maybe, would be joining in this one. This means we also have access to Circassia, which is a great expansion path, and let's release our beloved Astrakhan. Look at all these juicy cores here, guys. Look at all these juicy cores. Now that the Crimeans are not a valid rival anymore, we're going to be rivaling the nation of Poland. Why are we doing this, you ask? Because of the mission that we get, the Polish succession. We get claims on all of the Livonian lands, and after we've conquered the Livonian lands, we will be able to get a Union CB on the Poles. Now, the only issue is that we actually need to wait for our truce to finish until 14. 1449 our truce is finished we can attack them before we do so remember to summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits you as well as seize the land for an extra five percent crown lands. now we can attack set the closest province as your main target you don't need to cobalagerate riga for example because that would bring in a lot of other people you can cobalagerate the teutons if they don't have any massive alliance blocks just lubeck that's actually quite okay so we're gonna attack them now make sure you set up your uh, leaders properly and let's do it whilst i toil away fighting for 
our freedom here, my people decided they should rebel against their masters. This is unacceptable. In any case, I am going to piece out the Teutons here. I'm going to go for two provinces and all the cash I can get, as well as war reparations. That you go. There's a very specific reason why I went only for these two provinces, and we'll talk about it very soon. We're going to bring our army so we take care of our rebels in the meanwhile before we piece out the uh, Livonians. Taking care of these rebels actually cost me more manpower than the war against the Teutons and the Livonians. Not even joking. We vassalize Riga and we will be fully annexing the rest of the Livonian order. It is going to give us quite a bit of uh, aggressive expansion but because it's the first Catholic nation that we're taking out and before we were basically dealing with the Muslim nations, we are essentially dodging aggressive expansion between religious and cultural groups so we're getting less overall aggressive expansion which is great because it means we can basically avoid any big coalition. It also means that we get the personal union restoration on the poles as well as a permanent claim on the Novgorod area which seems to be in a little bit of a pickle. So overall I think I'm going to be focusing mainly on Novgorod before I focus on the poles because Novgorod is not going to be around for much longer. We're going to be attacking them and we're going to set Kolm as our war target here. Let's go try and take as much as we can. We need to take all of the Novgorod state in order to get the restoration of Union CB against Muscovy. And that is what we're going for. Novgorod has fallen and the Muscovites have taken a big chunk in their war. But I am taking the lands that I am interested in. I cannot take too much money but I can definitely take a little bit of cash as well. Coalition wise there is a small bit of a coalition of bigger nations around. But it's all good we'll be able to deal with them. Let's kill off the rebels first off and let's also concentrate development in this area. Core it up afterwards and we'll do the same here. We can also get the PU restoration of the Muscovites right now but we still have the one on the poles and we're going to use that first before we even attack the Muscovites. That being said we will take a new rival and we will be going for Genoa actually since it's going to be quite handy. We will attack them soon to get the three provinces here. No manpower, no economy but a little boy with the dream of a union. Let's call on the Hungarians and let's go. We're going to be making the poles our very own and remember if you need to you can always recycle the burger loans in fact i'm gonna do that right now since i've taken a few non-burger loans and i'm gonna pay those off there you go paying off the four percent ones and we are fine for quite a little bit longer in this war let's take out this army here since it's right next to us it's gonna be a very easy kill early on in the game or better yet early on in the war daria go no more poland make sure we carpet siege this area here as well and they're sieging down our stuff okay sure thing poland you go do that i'll just uh take all your stuff to enforce our demands we only need to get 60 percent war score and also there's gonna be a little bit of a coalition austria might join into that but by the time we enforce this it's gonna go down the coalition gonna be going for cash too and that's pretty much it don't really need anything else to be fair oh my freaking god krakow finally fell freaking two years almost to take a single city man it's insane how powerful this country is all right that means we can enforce our union over them and we're also gonna go for the cash to fix our pretty nasty economy coalition wise we do have some nations to be worried about but it should overall be fine let's go on commonwealth commonwealth we also have quite a few rebels in the north here that we got to get rid of and let's start improving volgast in the coalition we're done now we're done who else can we get here um you know what venice is not bad it also means we can do uh, this mission and force a commonwealth until the end of the game 10 percent governing capacity and i guess we can do this now there is a little bit of a coalition against me so i'm probably gonna wait with this mission until the coalition dissipates i'll just uh, focus on strengthening my country in the meanwhile a few moments later and we are ready to attack the great horde once more so that we can get the cores of our vassal astrakhan back should be a fairly easy war and we have a lot of troops compared to what we used to have before in the previous war against them all right this brief war is pretty much done let's uh, just piece them out here and we can now focus on the main target of theodoro you thought i'm gonna say russia didn't you now we're gonna attack these guys because they have no allies and they're basically a very very 
very easy target for me right now. Okie dokes, Theodoro is ours and we'll be taking everything of course. 28 aggressive expansion, really pretty much nothing here. And because we've been dodging between Orthodox, Catholic and Muslim, we have nothing to worry about coalition wise. We're gonna bring our troops by the Muscovite border because now we actually will be attacking the Muscovites. Of course, Coral of this stuff up as well. And we can get our mission secure Novgorod, which means we can do the union over the Muscovites now. And we should also get our first idea unlocked. Now, technically, the best idea would be quantity if we're talking about military ideas. But it also depends if you have a lot of Diplo points, then you can also go for either influence or diplomatic ideas to help integrate your vassals faster and PU members faster for that matter. I am still going to go for quantity because I got a lot of extra military points lying around and it is going to help me out so much since I'm always on the low low with my manpower. We are super ready for this. The Muscovites have also attacked Kazan so it is literally the best moment. They've also integrated Beluzaroso. They are slightly weaker with the less amount of vassals that they have. I'm going to get a little bit of cash from the uh, Crownlands and let's go with this restoration of union. They also have a union over Riazan so we're actually getting two PUs for the price of one. We're going to need to be careful though because they are not a nation to be trifled with. The Muscovites are really really strong. We'll try to do a little bit of carpet sieging and we are going to be praying to RN Jesus that they focus mostly on Kazan rather than us. Circassia is allied to them. Actually that's not bad because I might want to take some stuff from Circassia as well. I am both happy and very very worried. I haven't had a single battle against their armies yet because I haven't found them and I'm guessing they're focusing on uh, Kazan but I cannot tell where they're sieging either. Either, so it's kind of just weird. They have a few troops in the south here, but that's not 50k. What I'm worried about is really just uh, the fact that I'm going to enforce the union and because they have more troops than me, it's going to be impossible to keep them. Oh, there they are. Found them. I found them. Okay, time to bring our troops closer together because otherwise we're going to get stack wiped like there's no tomorrow. There we go. We took Nizhny Novgorod. That's pretty good. Do we have enough war score to enforce? We do have enough war score to enforce, but I want the cash too. So uh, I'm going to continue with with this war for a little bit longer we got better army tradition than them which is giving us a lot more uh morale but oh we actually managed to reinforce in time pretty good they're gonna reinforce this also if i'm not nope they're not gonna reinforce. that means we can attack them and destroy that army too there you go we have some rebels in the south we got crimeans we have uh some sort of nobility rebels i'm not sure what these guys are noble rebels there you go but nothing we cannot handle easily let's uh take these guys out there you go now let's uh make sure we can peace out we can there there you go boys how many times did i say there you go i think like a hundred anyway coalitions nothing to be fair and that's pretty good actually i'm not gonna actually take any lands from them i'm just gonna keep them like this and i'm not gonna bother with circassia even though i did want to go into that area screw it i'm not gonna do it we got a union with riazan also so we now have oh my dear lord five different subjects, two vassals, and three personal unions, all of which form the Powerpuff Girls. No, they form the Eastern European conglomerate. Look at this, boys. Look at this. All of Eastern Europe within the first 30 years. Ignore Kazan. That's not Eastern Europe. That's uh, that's something else. In any case, let's uh, do our mission then. We can do a union with Muscovy, getting a hundred military power, and we can also get even more of our amazing quality ideas. Let's bring our troops back because we are gonna have to deal with our rebels try and first off kill off the crimeans through the power of editing, we skipped a few years into the future and uh, good old Moldova is fully occupied by us. But what's gonna happen? Oh my god, I'm offering them the province of Halix. Why would I ever do this? Oh no, we lost a province, everybody. The reason is because we want to form Ruthenia. Remember what I said at the start? And to form Ruthenia, we need to own Halix directly. So we're gonna give it to Moldova now and once the truce is over, we're gonna them, and we're gonna take all of this from Moldova, including Halix. So in order to do that, we also have to be Ruthenian culture as our primary culture, which we are not. We have not stated any single new state since the start of this campaign, but we did save up a lot of admin power. This can be unstated. This one too. Basically anything that is not Ruthenian can be unstated. All right, let's see if this is enough. We're up to 39% primary culture Ruthenian. Let's go a 
few more provinces here 46 percent so if we do this this should be enough there you go 51 percent we just need a little bit more of diplo power so we're gonna skip a little bit till we get that and now we do have over a hundred so we're gonna culture shift over to ruthenian which means we can form the nation of ruthenia and remember what i said you need halix for that we also can form the polish lithuanian commonwealth and we don't have if we do this the horrible government type that you get as the poles so keep that in mind too but remember this is an end tag so if you do form polish lithuanian commonwealth you cannot form afterwards ruthenia now that we have switched over to ruthenian as our primary culture we can finally make all of our states full states and not just territories it also means that we're going to be using a lot of our admin points to make these full states but not to fear we have been saving up a lot of admin points although very likely it's not going to be enough this is going to take a lot of admin points to make all of these bad boys here full on uh, cores see as i said i don't have enough points it's going to take more than a thousand points to core everything to full statehood but because of that we're getting up to 10 ducats on the plus and if we lower the autonomy it's going to be even more afterwards there you go we got an extra ducat from uh, just lowering autonomy so guys now if you want to see this continued leave a like and let me know in the comment section what you think about the video idea wise i went for quantity influence ideas i will be going admin ideas next so i can have minus 45 percent diplo annexation costs from the policy between admin and influence together with influence's own diplo annexation cost minus 25 percent as well as i'll be going for diplomatic religious trade and economic eventually the order will be decided by my expansion at that particular time i also want to invite you guys over to my twitch channel you can find a link to that in the description i also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my twitch subscribers thank you so much guys for all the support i wouldn't be able to make these videos without you